Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today at Kingston Christian Fellowship. We are so glad that you have tuned in. Look, we've been doing a series on uh, on Joseph and his journey towards uh, Egypt and sitting second command, uh, second in command next to uh, next to Pharaoh. And you know, the Lord is doing some incredible things in the earth right now. He's doing some incredible things in and through his church. And we've been talking about how uh, Joseph's journey, his heart journey was the preparation that he needed so that he could sit second in command in Egypt and not let that position destroy who he was. Uh, character was built, shaped and formed. Everything he needed, uh, God took him on that journey so that he'd be ready uh, to sit in that position. And that's what God is doing right now uh, in this hour. He's continuing to prepare his church, the hearts of his people, so that he can promote them and give them influence in the earth today to continue to spread the gospel and share the message of God's unconditional love and grace. It's such an exciting season and such an exciting time to be alive. You know, I was talking to the church uh, last week just about, um, you know, when, when a building is being built, okay, and a, and a second floor needs to be constructed, the scaffolding also needs to get larger. If you picture the building as, as God building his church and churches increasing in size, the scaffolding ends up being the structure, you know, the, the leadership structure to help um, help build the, the next level. In fact, you know, the scaffolding often needs to grow before the second floor, or the next floor can be constructed. So all of a sudden, God enlarges the framework of a place so that the next floor, the next addition can be constructed. And that often has to happen first. It takes faith to build beyond the size you are currently. And, you know, a, a, a bypasser that's walking by a building that's being built and sees scaffolding that's up to the second floor, but there's no second floor will wonder, you know, what's what's going on here? I, I don't understand. They don't carry the, the blueprints or the vision for what is desired to be built. But the people that are engaged, that are hands on in the building of that project understand the scaffolding is up there and there's people on the second level of scaffolding before the second floor is built because they're visionaries they're up there with the perspective and looking around and this is how the second floor needs to go on on top of the first floor and 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 for it to continually be built but there there must be a change in shape of the scaffolding for the building to grow it it has to happen and god is doing this all over the place with so many churches they are uh, having to enlarge their leadership teams and step into arenas of of a different type of structure so that they can foster the growth that god is bringing that god is going to continue to bring and the harvest that is coming in in this season look and i, I remember telling the church last sunday you know you are the first floor everybody that's here right now is the first floor and god wants to add the second floor but he needs to make sure that the first floor is solid that relationships are solid that we know our identity you know that that the first floor is solid enough to be able to hold a second floor we all know the importance of foundations and even though you can't always see the full foundation of a house or a building it is of utmost importance because the foundation will dictate how tall a building can grow how big a ministry can grow how much god can uh, promote a certain place and increase its influence uh, before it, it falls in on itself. And so uh, these things are, are so important to keep in mind as God continues to uh, grow, as the kingdom continues to expand and as the harvest continues to come in. Uh, such exciting stuff. So let's uh, let's quickly get on with uh, with Joseph and and uh, and what I want to talk about today. Again, his journey is a heart journey. Right, Joseph's journey from uh, putting on his father's coat uh, all the way to sitting beside Pharaoh and all the incredible ministry that he accomplished there in that position. Uh, you know, it is a heart journey. God didn't say to Joseph, I want you to go from library to library. 
He found himself being mistreated, uh, thrown into a pit, sold into slavery, um, you know, wrongly accused uh, from from Potiphar's wife, you know, all these things in, in prison and then and then to second in command beside Pharaoh. And so his journey was a heart journey. It tested his identity. It tested what his father thought about him and spoke about him and and the expression of the coat, the richly ornamented coat. The New International Version says richly ornamented. Everything the father says about you and your identity is important for you to understand. That's why it happened at the beginning of the journey. The Bible says clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a... Um, a picture of what happened to Joseph, his identity in, in the coat was wrapped around him. And with that identity, he could then move forward. And every test was a test of his heart to say, will you believe what the father says about you? Or will you believe what these people who are mistreating you uh, say you are, that that you're worthless, you should be thrown into a pit. You're not worth anything. You're, you're a possession, not a person. So you're sold into slavery. All these untruths are tested so that a heart can be strengthened and affirmed in what our father believes about us so he can release us into the fullness of our purpose and destiny. Oh, it's so good. So he didn't go from library to library. You know, the truth is, is that the modern church already knows enough. The modern church already knows enough. God is waiting for our hearts to respond. We already have accumulated enough knowledge. We know to go and make disciples of all nations. Uh, you know, we, we know to, uh, in the Lord's Prayer, we know that we should pray your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. You know, we already have the directives. We already have the instructions. We already have the vision we need to accomplish what God has called us to. God's just waiting for our hearts to respond. And that's why this journey and, and this series about Joseph and this, this illustration in the Bible is so important because this is the journey we're on. You know, the Bible says that my people will be willing in the day of my power. And there's something about a willing heart, a heart that says yes, a heart that responds and positions itself to do whatever the Lord asks. Um, that is so powerful. And that's what God is doing in his church right now in this season. Look, the Lord gave me this phrase uh, as I was preparing this message. And he said, you know, lessons for the heart are often presented differently than lessons for the brain. Sometimes in North America, we try to digest everything the Lord is saying simply with our intellect. You've heard it said before, somehow we got to get what's in here down into here. And there never was a divide in, in you know, what God intended. There never was a divide. When you feast on things, his word was always supposed to go deep into your deep into your heart, deep into your spirit and soul. It was never supposed to be the processing of information. It was the digesting of a spiritual meal, the words of Jesus. He said, my, you know, my words are spirit and they are life. And so, uh, you know, God's waiting for our hearts to respond in this season. You know, Jesus did discipleship, but he didn't do it at the local library. You know, he said, come follow me. And then he lived life. He, he did life with people. And in that journey of life, he taught, uh, he taught lessons. So incredible. So look, your growth may not be on paper, but it may be an experience like Joseph. Your future growth and the growth that God wants to continue to bring into your life, it may not be just on paper, but it may be an actual life experience like Joseph experienced in his journey. You know, I asked the church, is anybody going through a difficulty right now? We see, that's a bit rhetorical, eh? We see Joseph um, in this journey uh, where there's lots of difficulty. Um, and through that difficulty, his heart was affirmed. His heart was tested, but it was affirmed in the truth of what his father felt about him. And, if you're going through a difficulty, the truth is, is your heart is being enlarged and prepared to carry the move of God for this generation, to carry what it is that God is doing in this generation. And so, um, you know, Joseph's story runs from Genesis 37 right to the end, Genesis chapter 37 right to the end. There's a lot of chapters in there. I'm not going to ask you to turn to anything in particular, but I want to continue to talk about um, 
elements of his story. And, and we see as we get to the uh, further parts in the story, the first ones, you know, being mistreated, thrown into a pit, sold into slavery, they really tested the, the negative, if we could call it that, the negative things, right? The, the failure type things. But you know what? Once he started to move into Potiphar's house, he started to be tested by success because Joseph's anointing was evident everywhere he went. He gets to Potiphar's house and he's put in charge there. He goes to prison and even though it looks like a step backwards, he's put in charge there. And then he goes to Pharaoh's house and yes, he's put in charge there as well. The anointing on his life was so incredibly evident. And I want you to notice the progression here, right? The first place was a house. It was Potiphar's own household. It was a smaller example or illustration of what it would be in Pharaoh's in Pharaoh's household, right? So all of a sudden, God positions uh, Joseph in a smaller setting, but doing exactly what he would be doing in a larger setting. And God is so faithful to position us in these places so that we can learn and continue to grow. So he's in Potiphar's house and he's understanding how to administrate, how to run a house, the different elements, how to how to uh, communicate with leaders and, and people that were responsible for different things in the house. He was learning incredibly valuable lessons that would pay off when he got to the, the larger size. So he's in Potiphar's house, someone's individual household. He moves to the prison which is which is in most places like a, a city a city kind of service right so he moves into a place of more influence you know like a like a place on in the the city council you know kind of thing right and then all of a sudden he's with pharaoh and now it's national it's about the nation and he's in charge of the nation and god takes us on this uh progression which is is really incredible i want to insert a very quick side note here is that even though Joseph was a slave, right, he was still being prepared for his ministry. And even though, uh, you know, he was a slave in Potiphar's house, right, he was a servant in his house, uh, he was still in the ministry. See, uh, so many of us struggle with seeing ourselves as less than who we really are. And even though, uh, you know, Joseph was a slave, he was doing all kinds of ministry. And, and you right now have the option of what you want to look at. You can look at yourself as less than, or you can see yourself engaged in the ministry. I worked at a restaurant for five and a half years, and that was part of my Joseph journey and what God was doing in my heart. And it's like, you know, you could look at being a waiter as something less than. I, I could have uh, moped around and grumbled and pouted or I could say, wow, this is preparation for my journey. I need to learn everything that I can here. I need to be alert in this circumstance and learn the lessons that God is teaching me. You know, and sometimes our low self-esteem drags us into these, um, in, into misery and woe, woe is me and a victim mentality. And that's not, that's not what God has designed us uh, for. So instead of looking at, at that, instead of looking at the position you're in, Look at the ministry opportunities. Look at what God has set up for you and learn everything that you possibly can. You know, our heart is continually tested on our journey with self-worth on one end, with pride on the other end, with giving God the glory. And uh, we just need to continue to make our way through by the grace of God and in his glory and in all his goodness. Uh, you know, it's really hard for God to work with pride. Uh, the Bible says God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And, you know, I, I never think about God resisting anybody or being against anybody, and he's really not. But what he doesn't want to do is promote you with pride so that your pride can get even bigger. Uh, pride is saying, you know, I don't need God. I've earned this on my own. And taking the credit when we need to give credit where credit is due, the Bible says, and give him all the glory. And so God uh, resists the proud simply because it's the best thing for you. Right. Uh, he wants you to have self-worth, but not in yourself. Uh, right. Paul talked about uh, I have no confidence in the flesh, but all my confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, you know, God is raising up an army of humble warriors, of people that know their God and do great exploits. You know, the book of Daniel says. And so here we are. Joseph looked after 
all of Potiphar's estate, which prepared him to look after all of Pharaoh's estate. And here's what I want to tell you today. Here's the punchline is I don't want you to stop short of your destiny. Don't settle for the house if God has called you for the nation. Don't settle for a small bit of success if God has called you to govern the nation. Okay, don't don't govern the house if God has called you to govern the nation. Uh, once you taste a little bit of ministry success or what God has called you to, it's it's wonderful. It's so incredible. Give him all the glory and then continue to walk your journey so that he can promote you and give you influence even greater than what you have. God wants to promote people all over the earth. He wants to promote his people into places of influence and prominence so that they can continue to to share his love and his grace so that they continue to uh, release the kingdom in all areas and all spheres of society and culture. Look, I've been part, personally, I've been part of churches of 20 and part of churches of 1500. I've seen what destroys and what splits churches. I've seen and participated in revivals. I've traveled, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of miles to just be part of revivals. And, you know, this is part of my personal journey. But the question will always come down to this. What will you do with what God has deposited in your life? Joseph journeyed through this this heart journey and and was prepared for the position. But what is he going to do with it? He could have forfeited uh, his destiny in Potiphar's house. He could have forfeited it with Potiphar's wife. He, you know, he he could have settled and just said, you know, this is far enough for me. I'm not going any farther. You know, it's it's what you do with what God has deposited in your life. Look back and and look at the journey God's taken you on. You know, you've met certain people for a reason. You've been in certain churches for the deposits that they've made in your life. You've sat on under certain leaders for a reason so that it can bear fruit in your own life. You know, I, I heard Reinhard Bonnke say like 20, 25 years ago that he was God's choice, third choice, sorry. Reinhard Bonnke believed that he was God's third choice. That's such an interesting statement to think that there were two people before him that forfeited the ministry that gave up, that disqualified themselves, but there was people before him that actually said no, or for some reason, you know, decided that they didn't want to do it. And so he picked up the mantle, right? God has assignments throughout the earth that he wants to see accomplished, but he needs people that are willing. He needs people whose hearts are positioned towards him and, you know, that that are willing to pick up these mantles and these assignments. It's uh, it's so important that we do. It's so important that we hear the voice of the Lord and we step into what he has for us. OK, I want to make uh, one point just before we uh, we close today. Um, you know, at, at some point, the people caring for you will let you down. This is what happened with uh, with Joseph. He got to Potiphar's house, uh, started to increase in favor, blessing, anointing, responsibility, and all of a sudden he has the run-in with Potiphar's wife. And you know the the truth is is that uh, there will be temptations with success. There will be temptations to say, you know, and I deserve this. I need a break. I need I need uh, you know to to rest or some R and R rest and relaxation you know and and you may you may try to cheat a little bit, um, but the truth is is there will be temptations with success just as there are with failure. With failure, the temptations are to give up, to look at yourself as a worm instead of to see yourself as your true identity, a child of God, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a chosen people. The temptations with success are are, are really, you know, pride's the glaring one, um, you know, to take credit for yourself, um, uh, all, all this sort of stuff. But there will be temptations with success and we've got to continue to make choices because life will continue to give us options. We've got to continue to make choices that glorify God. And, uh, you know, the true test of a person's heart is really who they are when nobody's looking. <coughs> Excuse me. It's it's who they are when nobody's looking. 
It's how you're formed and shaped in the secret place, how you're formed and shaped in the difficult times and what the Lord speaks to you in those times and how he comforts you and ministers to you in those in those seasons, you know. Um, and all of a sudden, here, here Joseph is in this place where he's now wrongly accused. You know, he, he didn't make an error. He, he didn't forfeit his destiny, but he's still wrongly accused and he's still suffering the fruit or the consequences of something he didn't even do. And, and all of a sudden, if you find yourself in that place in your journey, how much do you fight for your reputation? How much is your reputation worth to you? What did Jesus do when he was in the place where his reputation was on the line, right? Are you okay to entrust your life into God's hands and trust that he's fighting for you, not, not to fight for yourself, right? I know that God has built us with justice in our hearts, but there also comes a point in which we just have to entrust and commit our lives to Jesus and believe that, you know, his ability to keep us is greater than the enemy's ability to destroy us. Our faith in God brings us into our, our destiny in these difficult situations, you know. Sometimes we just have to let God do the things that we can't do, right? The Bible says that he's the one that promotes. Humble yourselves before the mighty hand of God, and in due time, he will lift you up, okay? Sometimes we, sometimes humility is just the choice we need to make. and Humility is, is actually the path to influence, promotion, and increase in our life. Okay, this also paints the picture of people, the people caring for you, letting you down, right? Joseph's in Potiphar's house. He and his wife, uh, Potiphar and his wife are overseeing Joseph's care and, and what he's doing and and he's let down, right? He's, he's um, wrongly accused. He's let down by the leaders of the household. And, uh, you know, it's funny, I was speaking to a a local pastor the other day, I pastored a church for, has pastored the church for 29 years. And I said, you know, as your church grew, how did you restructure to handle pastoral care as the needs got bigger? Because you didn't, you didn't multiply yourself. You, you didn't make time appear out of nowhere. Uh, you know, what did you do? And he looked at me and he said, Adam, I've been the lead pastor for 29 years and I still haven't figured it out. <laughs> And, uh, you know, he said, we've had a lot of hits. You know, there's a lot of things that, that we've done well. Hospitality teams that have cared for people, cards, flowers, visitations. He said, but we still have a lot of misses. And, you know, at some point, human beings are going to let you down. And in, in my opinion, every time that happens, it just provides us with the opportunity to go back to who our real source is. And sometimes I, I just feel that sometimes we are presented with these opportunities more often than not. I feel like our, our attachment needs to be to the Lord and not, not to a person. You know, we often promote and, and put people on a pedestal. A lot of the celebrity pastors have incredible gifts and incredible anointings, but we, we, we take them into an unhealthy place. Uh, you know, in my own life, I always want to point people to Jesus. I will let people down. It's just the way it is. I don't have all the gifts. I don't have, you know, unlimited resources and unlimited time. And, and it just helps to point people towards where the source is. I've had to learn that myself. You know, there's people that have let me down. And I realize, wow, you know what? God is actually my source. They aren't. God's the one that's going to change my circumstance, that's going to minister to me in this, uh, you know, in this difficulty. And so, you know, it's a constant reestablishing you know, the GP, the GPS is uh, recalculating and, and pointing us towards where our, our real source is. I want to leave you with this example today because it's such a good one, right? Uh, we see David, I believe it's First Samuel 30. We see David in this place where he's in the darkest place of his life up until that point. He's out fighting with his men. He comes home and the village has been ransacked. It's on fire. Uh, you know, the, the women and children have been taken. And all of a sudden, his men turn on him. Um, you know, they don't support him. They don't encourage him. You know, they, they don't stick around. They, they take off and they turn their back on him. And all of a sudden, David is left all alone. It's the worst day of his life. It's so difficult. 
you know, and, and this is what it says. And, and you know what it says. It says he encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. In, in the darkest time when people had let him down, he actually turned to the Lord, to his source. And it's almost like God said in this most difficult time of his life, it's almost like God said, okay, his heart is ready. David's heart is ready. Because when we start to turn to the Lord in the most difficult times, and we, when it's affirmed, when it's solidified that he is our source and God knows we will always turn to him and look to him in the most difficult seasons of our life, uh, then he knows we're ready to be promoted. You know what happened in the very next chapter after David responds in this manner to the Lord in the most difficult time of his life? In the very next chapter, David becomes king. In the very next chapter, God sees how David responds in the darkest moment where he could have quit. He could have given up. He could have said, I'm a failure. He could have wallowed in depression and become a victim and had a victim mentality, but he didn't. He encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. And God said, he's ready. He's ready to be king. And he promotes him in the very next chapter. We are on the same journey. We're on this journey of turning to God and knowing he's our source and God is ready to promote us. He's just waiting to increase your influence, to extend your tent pegs and, and to promote you into the next step of your journey. You know, sometimes your destiny is on the other side of the most difficult thing you've ever been through. And if you're in that season right now, I want to encourage you to encourage yourself in the Lord. I want to encourage you that it's at that moment of destiny, that, that moment that breakthrough is right around the corner, the increase, the promotion is there. To think about this, this sermon, to think about this portion of scripture and encourage yourself that I'm, I'm about to increase in influence. You know, whenever I face great difficulty, the manner in which I position my heart will determine the level of promotion on the other side. Whenever you face a great difficulty, the manner in which you position your heart will determine the level of promotion on the other side. Do you remember what was in between Joseph leading at Potiphar's house and Joseph leading for Pharaoh? Do you remember what was in between those two things happening? It was the prison. It was the difficulty. It was in between Potiphar's house and sitting second in command beside Pharaoh a difficulty that tested and prepared Joseph's heart for the next promotion. Look, I'm, I want to leave you with this, uh, with this quote, with this, uh, with this simple phrase. Any heart test we face is about promotion. It's not about punishment. Any heart test we face is about promotion and not about punishment. We need to know like Joseph did, who our God is, how he feels about us, his unconditional love for us. He'll never leave us, never forsake us. He doesn't punish his children. He teaches them. He disciplines them so that we can grow and step into the fullness of our destiny. Any heart test we face is about promotion, not punishment. Let's be a people that love to learn. Let's be a people that love to learn the lessons and are excited to be promoted so that we can extend the kingdom and see people uh, see people healed, set free, see people come to know Jesus. Thank you so much for watching today. Look, we are cheering you on. We're encouraging you. We're praying for you. We're praying that the fullness of God's purposes will be revealed in your life, and we believe it will be. We're cheering you on in the journey. Keep giving your yes to Jesus. Keep positioning yourself. Guard your heart for it's the wellspring of life and continue to be vulnerable before the Lord. We love you. We bless you. Have a great day.